here in New York and, uh, and to um, everybody who, um, well, thank you to all of you who came here. The, um, you know, there's three things that really make a difference in the world, I think, and that is uh, passion, courage, and uh, imagination. And that's what we try to, uh, to uh, get people involved with is. And that's one of the reasons that Sea Shepherd is predominantly a, a volunteer organization because we simply couldn't do uh, what we're doing without the, the passion of those volunteers. You know, we get criticized when people say, well, uh, you know, your crew aren't professional. I don't want professionals. Professionals aren't going to get the job done. I couldn't pay people to do what these volunteers do for us. <laughs> And because there's three types of supporters, there's people who, of course, volunteers who work on the ships, uh, the shore volunteers who make that all possible for them to be on the ships, and then, of course, our supporters from around the world that are, you know, basically uh, fund what our operations. We're a Navy, we're a Navy for the whales, but whereas the, uh, the U.S. Navy gets support from the taxpayers, we have to have our support as voluntary. And, but that's growing every year, and the more, the, the more support we get, the more effective we can uh, become. So we've grown quite, quite uh, well over the last few years, and we're making more and more uh, of a difference. This year, for instance, uh, we're taking on numerous campaigns. Uh, Animal Planet is showing, of course, uh, whale wars uh, for the fifth season from Antarctica. And also we have, um, for the first time, Whale Wars Viking Shores about taking on the pilot whale hunt. In, uh, in fact, right after, at 10 o'clock, I have to go up and do this. Um, debate. Uh, they couldn't find a scientist or a whaler or a politician from the Faroe Islands to debate, so I'll be debating uh, the lead singer for a group called Pyre, a heavy metal band from the Faroe Islands. And uh, he, he wrote some song about us called Rainbow Warrior. I said, you got the wrong organization. Next time, you know, next time do some research before you write the song. But um, we're also being involved in you know, protecting tuna in the Mediterranean. Uh, of course, uh, the Cove Guardians protecting dolphins uh, in uh, in Japan. Now, the last uh, campaign down to Antarctica, I was hoping would be our, our last, uh, the, we succeeded in our objective, which was to sink the Japanese whaling fleet economically. We've done that, they're bankrupt. What we hadn't counted on, what we hadn't counted on last year was them taking $30 million from the Tsunami Earthquake Relief Fund to fund their whaling operations. Now there's just a limit to how much they can continue to subsidize these whaling operations. And uh, we're going, as long as then the 17% this last year is because our scout vessel, the Bridge of Bardot, was uh, severely damaged by a rogue wave and uh, without a scout vessel it handicapped us. But still, we chased them for 17,000 miles and uh, during three month period and they only got the 26%. And uh, of the 50 fin whales that they wanted to kill, they killed one. And uh, the rest, uh, they have no humpback whales, and the rest were minke whales. But next year, our objective, we've got a name for the next campaign, is Operation Zero Tolerance. And uh, our, objective, our objective is a zero, uh, zero kills. And we will be going... Is this okay? We'll be going down there stronger than ever uh, because we're now going to secure a fourth ship so we will have that fourth ship as our second scout vessel. So two scout vessels, two ships. And the objective is to make sure they, they, don't, um, they don't kill a single whale. So we're hoping that, uh, and we're looking at about 120 volunteers going down there for that period. The Cove Guardians, of course, will be returning in September. We've managed to cut the kills of dolphins in half over the last two years. And uh, we will continue. With bluefin tuna, which uh, the, the tuna are in very, very serious uh, situations, we're being sued by a Maltese company in a British court, and we're fighting that. But um, I think that eventually, uh, I think that we'll win that. And uh, even if we don't, we still breed 800 uh, bluefin tuna that are alive because of that. And, so, and of course, our ongoing campaign in the Galapagos Islands. And the reason we're in the Galapagos uh, and have been there for 12 years is, uh, is that if we can't say something as unique as the Galapagos, what are we going to say? So Alex Cornelison is leading that, uh, that effort in the, in the Galapagos. Uh, we provided a canine unit with the uh, po police to sniff out shark fins and contraband. We even caught an American tourist trying to smuggle an iguana out in a water bottle last year. But um, we also have a, just uh, installed a 1 million euro G uh, AIS system to monitor all the ship's traffic in the Marine Park. 
And um, so we're making some progress, uh, quite a bit of progress in, in the Galapagos. And of all of the, you know, it's, it's really amazing with all of these organizations around the world, I'm talking about real big organizations, you know who they are, none of them are down there. And uh, so it's very frustrating uh, that um, these, these very large organizations, you don't see them doing these things. The problem is, is everybody's afraid to do anything because, oh my God, we might get somebody upset or, you know, the government might uh, call us names. We don't mind being called names. They can call us all the names they want. Um, they call us eco-terrorists. I just have to say, no, I don't work for BP. But... Um, <laughs> And by, by the way, uh, Peter Brown is here tonight, and he he he, he uh, finishes film con Confessions of an Eco Terrorist. If you watch this film, you'll see that the word terrorist absolutely means nothing at the end. It's sort of a name everybody gets. I mean, geez, even Obama's a terrorist these days, so you can't get away from it. You know, you do anything, you're a terrorist. Call a boy, cut a tuna fish, bang, you're a terrorist. So you know, uh, I, I think it was the premier of Newfoundland said that I was a terrorist, not welcome in, Newf in Newfoundland. I said I'll go to Newfoundland if you want. So either arrest me or shut the hell up and stop their name calling. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, is, is there some weird noise coming from this thing, isn't there? Is there anything to do about that, or is that just a... <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> so, um, I just want to go back to, uh, really, Sea Shepherd is now uh, active around the world. We've got chapters everywhere. Uh, we just set up a chapter in uh, Denmark and the Danes will be making an effort to try and put pressure on against the Faroe Islands there. At the International Whaling Commission meeting last July on the Isle of Jersey in the Channel Islands off of between England and France, uh, we brought the Bridge of Bardot and attended that meeting. And it was really interesting because they had all the non-government organizations that attended. We all had this meeting. And Sea Shepherd uh, supporters outnumbered all of the others together by about twice as many people. And somebody from one of the big organizations says, how did you afford to bring all these people here? I said, well, we didn't. They all came on their own. And, uh, and so everybody was introducing themselves. And, you know, they went there, you know, Greenpeace, and IPW, and everything. And they said, then went Green, uh, then went Sea Shepherd, Switzerland, Sea Shepherd, France. And somebody said, Sea Shepherd, Jersey. And I said, we have a Sea Shepherd, Jersey? I mean, Jersey Isles. And, and apparently we did. Uh, so th that's the great thing about it is that uh, people come forth and feel empowered to, uh, to make that difference. Because I've always been very optimistic because I feel that the answer to all of our problems lies in finding the impossible solution. But I think that the impossible can be made possible by just having the imagination and the courage to pursue that. I mean, for instance, in 1972, the very idea that Nelson Mandela would be president of South Africa was unthinkable, unimaginable, and impossible, yet it happened. So this is what gives me the, uh, you know, the, uh, this optimistic outlook that we can actually turn things around. And the important thing is we have to save our oceans. This is not the planet Earth, this is a planet ocean. And um, if, if the oceans die, we die. And every single commercial fishery is in a state of collapse right now. And we really have to start looking at this in a very intelligent manner or there's not going to be a future for the human race. The Earth will survive, it'll be here, it usually takes 18 to 20 million years to recover from a major extinction event. That's nothing for the planet, but it's a big deal for us. So if we want to survive, we should take that into account. And what I always try to do is to tell people to picture us for what we are really on, a spaceship. This is Spaceship or Ocean or Spaceship Earth. And like any spaceship, it's traveling through space. We're actually moving right now at about 500 miles a second on this incredible trip around the Milky Way galaxy. And to give you an idea of helping the Milky Way galaxy, we've only gone around 20 times in the entire history of the planet. It takes 250 million years to do this trip around the galaxy. But meanwhile, while we're on Spaceship Earth, we have this life support system called the biosphere. And that biosphere is maintained by a crew. And that crew are the worms, the bacteria, the insects, the plants, the trees, the fish. They're the crew. They're maintaining Spaceship Earth. What are we? We're passengers. We're having a great time entertaining ourselves, but we're not running the ship. Uh, we're, but what we are doing is killing off the crew. There's only so many crew members we can kill off before the life support system begins to collapse and we find ourselves in serious trouble. And a couple of years ago, the Fox Network came after me because they thought that I was so anti-people that I had made this outrageous statement that worms were more important than people. And they said, how dare you say something how that outrageous, that worms are more important than people. How can you justify that? And I said that I made that statement because worms are more important than people. <laughs> and, the, and the reason behind that is simple. 
Worms can live on the earth without people. People cannot live on the earth without worms. We need them, they don't need us. We need fish, they don't need us. We need bees, they don't need us. We need trees, they don't need us. We have to recognize that the strength of an ecosystem lies in diversity, and we are interdependent with all of those species. We are not on the planet Earth alone. And I had somebody at the University of Texas say, well, you know, we're, we're individuals, we have, we're, we, we have cyberspace now, we don't need nature. <laughs> whatever that meant. And uh, I said, well, first of all, you're not, you're not an individual. You're interdependent on all these other species. And he says, I'm not interdependent on in anything. I said, okay, when I'm looking at you, I'm looking at uh, an organism that now contains 700 to 1,000 species of bacteria, over one trillion individuals, and two and a half kilos of your body weight is bacteria. Without those bacteria, you couldn't make vitamins, digest your food, or even groom your eyelashes. We are interdependent on them. If that bacteria were to disappear, we would all die. So that illustrates interdependence right there. Of course, then people start to determine what And we mammals were sort of like the, sort of the, um, I don't know, the, the celebrities and the, and the you know, A-list models of the, of the animal world, but we're not that important, you know. And we have to recognize that we owe our existence to all these other species. So anyway, we're going from here to, uh, you know, the, the fleet is expanding, and uh, we'll have uh, the four ships in operation. We'll be this summer in uh, the South Pacific protecting sharks. Of course, we'll be in the Galapagos. And one of the things that we're trying to champ champion sharks is a little more difficult than champion whales because you know, people think that sharks are these horrible monsters. When in fact, when you look at the statistics, they're not as bad as everybody thinks. Uh, the average number of people that are uh, killed by sharks every year is five. The average number of people killed by ostriches every year is a hundred. So the ostrich uh, is 20 times more dangerous than the shark, but we don't want to go killing off all the ostriches. The average number of people killed by soda pop machines falling on them every year is not. And it's more dangerous, it's more, da more dangerous to play golf than it is go to go diving with sharks because more people die on golf courses struck by lightning every year than are killed by sharks. And if you notice that most cases of shark, most of the time the sharks bite, but they don't eat because all because unfortunately surfers look like sea lions from a bot from the bottom, and the shark makes a mistake, and it's not very good if, for you if the mistake is made. But you have to understand that we're in their house and we have to behave accordingly. Somebody told me the other day, you know, some stranger walked into my living room wearing just a speedo, I'd be pretty upset too. <laughs> so, trying to get respect for sharks, I mean, we have to understand that sharks have molded evolution in our oceans for 450 million years. Every fish you see, its color, its camouflage, its behavior, has been shaped by this apex predator, the shark. You remove the shark from the equation, you cause all sorts of evolutionary damage uh, to the ocean. So they're extremely, extremely important. And my own experience with sharks, swimming with them, is they're more afraid of us than uh, we have any right to be afraid of them. After all, on average, we kill, they kill five humans a year. On average, we kill 90 million of them. So it's certainly a big disparity between that. Now the other problem with us is that we have this incredible ability to adapt to diminishment. And that's something we have to get over. As things get worse, we say, oh, just so that's the way it is. I mean, if this is the year 1965 and I were to say to you, you know, in uh, 2010, you're going to be buying water in bottles and paying more for that water than the equivalent amount of gasoline. Now, I saw in a hotel in uh, New York a bottle, a liter of water for $12. That's $48 a gallon. In a city which has got the cleanest drinking water in the country. So instead of drinking the water of the tap or two in the less pure stuff and paying $12 a liter for it, that's just insanity. And that, but it's adaptation to diminishment. And again, we're adapting to all sorts of things. Orange roughy, a fish, you never hear about it anymore. It was big in the 90s. Why? Because it takes 45 years to become sexually mature and lives to be 200 years and we wipe them out. So we just go on to another species and another species. And we forget that 40% of all of the fish that we're taking out of the ocean is being consumed by livestock. Pigs are now eating more fish than sharks. Chickens are uh, now eating more fish than puffins. And domestic house cats are eating more fish than all the world's seals put together. And when fishermen say, oh, we gotta kill the seals because the seals are eating the fish, if we just stop feeding the fish to the cats, and by the way, it's not a natural food for a cat. If a bluefin tuna ever met a cat, the cat would be me. You know, so it's just not natural. And all over the world, though, we constantly look at these animals as scapegoats. So we wanna kill the seals in Canada because they're eating our fish. Everything is our fish, when in fact we were the ones that destroyed them. When Jacques Cartier first came to the, north, uh, to the eastern coast of North America, there were 45 million seals on the east coast. 
and now with a ten, less than 10 percent of that number we're blaming the seals for the destruction of the fish it's not the seals it's us and we've got to start learning to put, point the blame where it really lies with ourselves so that's what sea shepherd is basically One of the reasons that we don't get too upset when people call us names is because we, whatever people call us names or criticize, say, yeah, well, whatever, talk to the hand because, you know, we're really not interested in your criticism. We welcome your support. But as far as criticism is concerned, you find me one whale or one shark that disagrees with what we do and we might reconsider <laughs> doing what, what, what we're doing. But that, the fact is, is that, um, and for instance, that we even get criticized because of our logo, the pirate logo. Now, the reason we have that pirate logo is very simple is because back in the 17th century, it wasn't the British Navy that put an end to the piracy in the Caribbean. There were too many politicians and uh, military people and everything at the time taking uh, bribes and piracy was flourishing. It's not much different than the way things are today, is it? And uh, so piracy was finally ended in the Caribbean because of the efforts of Henry Morgan, a pirate. If you want to stop pirates, you need pirates to do it. Because the great thing about being a pirate, you're not encumbered by bureaucrats. You can get things done. And uh, that's the problem with regulatory agencies. They can't get anything done. And it, it's amazing how many ex-Coast Guard, ex-Navy, ex-EPA, and all these people come to join Sea Shepherd because they couldn't do their job when they were in that position. Uh, uh, the guy, uh, the man who's in charge of our Code Guardian program is the head of enforcement for the West Coast for the Environmental Protection Agency. He says that he's busted more people with Sea Shepherd than he ever was allowed to do when he was with the EPA. So I'd like to thank also Verity, an eco bartender, and uh, we and let me see, and vegan treats, of the great desserts, and thank you for that. Thank you for the carrot cake. Uh, it's the only dessert I eat, so that was incredible. And that, and uh, you know, thank you also to uh, I've got some crew members here. Andrea Gordon's here. She's uh, from uh, New York, Brooklyn, actually. But she she's uh, she's the uh, ship, ship's manager for the uh, Bob Barker. And that and uh, Jeff Milstein's here from New Jersey. And crew member uh, Peter Brown is here somewhere. Yeah. Uh, actually, the, 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 the crew member that everybody loves to hate, but he's really a nice guy. Uh, and uh, who else am I missing here? Oh, uh, Tiffany uh, Humphrey here is my uh, assistant, but now she's really upset because I introduced her. Uh, uh, oh, and uh, yeah, uh, De 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 the Debster over here, Deborah, who's actually, where is she? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, she's now the new star of the uh, Viking Shores. Uh, <laughs> No, 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 you are in there. You're, you're, you're much prettier than I am. And, um, oh, oh, Todd back there, yeah, you're, you're doing you're working in the Galapagos. Uh, he was too much. And so, you know, sort of thing, we had the, we had the Steve Irwin here in, uh, uh, two years ago at the end of the dock at uh, Chelsea Pier. It was really interesting at the end of the, we were at the end of a driving range, so people kept throwing shooting golf, golf balls at us. But it was really nice to be here, and we of course we're in New Jersey, and uh, and that, and hopefully we'll come back again. Uh, it's always uh, it's always nice to come to the states, even though it's a little difficult because you have to run the gauntlet of Homeland Security. But they never can catch us any. It's really interesting because uh, two years ago I had a call from uh, uh, National Marine Fisheries, and the call was, "We understand you're confiscating long lines in the Pacific." Yes, that's right. Well, you can't do that. Why? Well, it's illegal. Oh, what law are we breaking? Well, that's private property. You can't just go taking people's private property. Yeah, what's well, being used illegally? Well, it's still private property. <laughs> okay, uh, so what law are we breaking? I'll get back to you, but I know you're breaking a law. <laughs> and of course, they never got back to us. Oh, sorry, I gotta go now and go debate this heavy metal guy. Uh, <laughs> He's bragging on his Facebook page. He's going to humiliate me with facts and the truth. <laughs> but it basically comes down to this: I'm defending life. He's defending death. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. And, uh, and I'll be back down here right after, right after, right after this debate. Thank you.